The current standoff in Washington over raising the debt ceiling has put the White House in a tough situation. Our next guest says there's no way the country can keep this up right now at our current pace without major cuts being made. Joining us now is Arizona Congressman and member of the House Judiciary and Oversight Committee, Andy Biggs. Congressman, thanks for joining us. So what specific cuts are Republicans calling for? Well, you, you're going to target waste for sure. So let's think of the social welfare programs or the social nets that are out there. I think of things like uh, PBS, uh, National Endowment of the Arts. These are the low-hanging fruit that, that people look at and say, why are we, why are we supporting uh, these agencies where there's already private sector that is robust and active? That's where you go. And I'm not saying you don't look at the uh, DOD spending as well. A study was done a few years ago that said they waste $100 billion plus a year. So you're going to have to find the waste. And if you start finding the waste and peeling it back, um, all of a sudden you realize you don't have to spend so much. And then you don't have like the monthly deficit in December was $82 billion. So you don't have that kind of structural deficit. That means you don't have to raise the, the, the uh, debt ceiling uh, so often, and you can start moving towards a balanced budget. And that's what Republicans are calling for. Yeah, good point. Um, I, Congressman, I thought this was fascinating. West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin, uh, a Democrat, by the way, says the White House needs to come to the table and work with Republicans immediately. Take a listen. You think that the White House should come to the table and talk to Republicans about some cuts in spending in exchange for raising well, the I debt ceiling? At the time, Vice President Joe Biden did exactly that. But you just heard Dick Durbin, the number two Senate Democrat, saying times are different now and should be. I, we just respectfully disagree. Okay. And anything about it is every American has to live within a budget. If they don't, they're in trouble. All right. Interesting there. Is the tide starting to turn, Congressman? Because the White House is going to listen to Joe Manchin and Dick Durbin. Uh, do you expect the White House to work with you? Yeah, I think the White House has got to come and, and work with us because... They, they, you know, they've taken extraordinary measures. That's what the Treasury Secretary is doing right now. That means that everything's going to keep going, but we have until roughly the third quarter of this year, and that's when that's when the the real crisis moment hits. So we've got some time. So so Biden needs to come to the table, and we can start working out and start getting ready of programs. And I'll tell you how hard it is. I introduced a bill one time to reduce a pro, uh, eliminate a program for for like fifteen or twenty million dollar program that was duplicated. There were two other programs just like it in other agencies, and I couldn't even get that through. So we have got, Congress has got to step up and, and be a leader on this. And, and I think the Republicans will be here, but the White House has got to come to the table if we're going to solve this problem. Yeah, you just got to go line by line, right? Like we do at home with our budget. Uh, right. Take a look at the politi this political headline. Trump to GOP, don't touch Medicare or Social Security and debt ceiling fight. The ex-president has long viewed entitlement reform as a political loser, but his timing now is notable. Sir, if you turn on some of the, the left media, they're saying this is what Republicans want to do. They want to get rid of Social Security uh, and Medicare. What are your thoughts on that? Is that going to be tough? No, uh, that's just a big uh, uh, red herring that the Democrats are throwing out there because they don't want to cut anything. So, so they're out there saying, hey, look, you know, we want to, this is what Republicans are going to do. They're going to throw, you know, you'll see the video of, uh, you know, the cartoon of somebody pushing a grandma off the cliff in a wheelchair. That's just not the case. I haven't heard anybody saying that. What we're talking about is getting at the nub of the waste in Washington, D.C., which should be enough to start whacking down uh, our spending, which should mean that we don't have to keep raising the credit card limits. We have a problem, and it's not a revenue problem. It's a spending problem. And yeah. that's why you end up with, with this uh, annual deficit, structural deficit, which leads to the national debt. Congressman, just 15 seconds. Uh, how would you evaluate Speaker McCarthy? Uh, we started the year with some fireworks, but uh, he's had a good few weeks, um, got rid of proxy voting, stripped people like Ilhan Omar and Eric Swalwell of their committee assignments. How would you evaluate his first couple weeks as Speaker? I'd give him a, an A. He's kept every promise that he made. He's, he has shown more grit, more determination, and more backbone, and I'm grateful for that. And uh, I, I wish him success. I want him to be the best speaker ever because it means we'll have a great, uh, yeah. a great term. All right, Congressman Andy Biggs, great state of Arizona. Good to see you again, sir. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. All right.